I'm just going to push the garage door button opener and uh, we'll watch the roof roll off. And uh, we can go inside and take a look at what we've got. Hey everyone, this is Nico from Nebula Photos. My friend Jay Sotolano has recently built his dream roll-off roof observatory in his yard in rural Pennsylvania. Jay was kind enough to invite me over for an observatory tour to explain its design, and I'm sharing that experience here on YouTube in the hopes that it helps others with their home observatory builds. What you're looking at is a kind of a ready-made observatory. There is a company down in Ackman, Pennsylvania. Stolfus is the name of the company. Mine was the first that they had ever done by actually adding a warm room onto it. So we actually went through the design phase with them uh, to add the warm room to the uh, observatory itself. Um, we walked about talking about how we were going to do two piers. Each of the piers is isolated uh, from the original floor that was poured, the concrete floor that was poured. There's about an inch spacing between the piers. Um, any of the wiring that runs through uh, is all encased in a plastic housing so that if, if any critters get in there, they won't be chewing through cables, hopefully. Um, it's an interesting story about how we did the piers themselves as far as those bolts that you see sticking up. Um, instead of just using the standard J-hooks that, that you'll see happen in a lot of observatories, well, one of the contractors was also a welder. And so what he did was he actually used those threaded rods, built a cage with rebar, and those went down almost two feet and we sank that into the concrete. This is one of the actual forms that I used to do that pier, um, pardon the scratch outs and so forth. But what we did was my wife and I came out at night before anything was poured, just the, the, when the columns were in, um, and we marked out where north was going to be and where south was going to be. Um, we put notches so that we could see, and those notches aligned with the edges of the piers. So on the piers, on the outside of the piers, we put where north and south was, we put levelers in there, and then when the time came, we attached this to the cage, we sank it down into the cement, aligned north and south, and that's how we pretty much got everything level and pretty much lined up with north and south to begin with. And so these became really invaluable to working with the, the piers and, and setting them in the concrete. Sorry for the noise. But as you can see, it rolls pretty smooth. Even at three or four o'clock in the morning, I haven't gotten any complaints from the neighbors as far as the roof closing or opening. One of the things that you see in a lot of observatories that are roll off roofs is the, is the, the old, older way of doing uh, rolling, right? Which is to have the angle iron sitting on top of the, the, the roof itself or on top of the, the building itself. And then you would have those large three or four inch rollers that have the indentation. And, and that's how you would do the rolling. Um, one of the things about those is it, it can be really, really hard. If one of those wheels tends to go bad or one of those wheels locks up, it becomes really difficult to try and change that out fairly easily. Uh, one of the things about this is these are garage door opener wheels. Um, each wheel can hold about 110 pounds. Um, there's 22 on each side for this roof. The roof weighs about six to 700 pounds. So the beauty is, is if a wheel goes bad, as you can see underneath, there's only a couple of screws that are holding it in place. And I can drop that whole wheel assembly out, replace it with one of these that, that Nico was just filming, put it in, and I'm back in business. And really the only out time that I've got is how long it takes me to take a few screws out of the top. And then, like I said, you put in the new wheel if one of them happens to get a little bit tied up. So again, something you think about as you think about how would I improve upon things, right? How would I work with things? Um, what you're looking at is the construction that they used. It's actually built by the Amish community. The company, again, that, that works out of Ackland, again, Stolfitz, um, they hire people from the Amish community to actually do the construction. And if you've ever seen anything that, that you know, their history in terms of barn raisings and so forth, they are excellent, excellent carpenters. And so they bring that trade into building this. The company itself did a lot of this with storage sheds. That's what they were, their primary business was. Um, but they've branched out now into these observatories and have really, really come a long way. Um, we have people, I've had people here 
to look at the observatory who are considering one for themselves from Maryland, from Maine, from other areas that, um, that would just want to see before they actually you know, purchase one, what's one of the ones that looks like when it comes out. Um, so they deliver all over the Northeast? They do. Um, and um, I have some videos, I'm not sure if Nico's going to include them or some pictures. It was an amazing delivery. Um, the floor was already poured, the concrete pillars, uh, the bases were already in before the building actually came. And the building comes off of a truck. Um, and then at that point, they have this remote control, radio control, whatever you want to call it, forklift. And they are actually able to roll the entire building, make adjustments as much as like a sixteenth of an inch with this huge building <laughs> sitting over the floor that's been poured and over the concrete pillars, as you can see, that were already in the ground. And so the holes that were cut at the factory how well they aligned those holes up uh, to match the concrete pillars that, that were already poured and in the ground. That was, that was the part that amazed me, is that the entire building rolled over the top of those and it was set down perfectly in place. So you mentioned you've, you know, you've seen Friends Observatories, you've thought a lot about this over the years, so you've already put in a lot of like collected wisdom into this design. Yeah. Is there anything that's been unexpected that you, you, know, you regret or anything that's come up? We tried to do as much you know, as possible. You, you, see the, you see the tree line around, you know, and, and you and I talked about this a little bit offline. Um, my wife and I actually came out and we used poles, right, that we cut to height of where we knew the roof was going to be so that I could actually see from where the observatory, where the mounts were going to be, what my line of sight was going to be to the trees. So that's one thing that I don't think people necessarily think about is line of sight over the top of a roof, right? Um, and you need to, right? Because the worst thing to do is find out that you built the walls too high and you've lost 10 degrees of the sky, right? Yeah. In terms of the wall height, what do, what do you think, so other than what you're saying about you know, losing sky. What what do you think the other consideration with wall height is? Is it is it about comfort more, or is it about wind, or is it everything? Wind yeah. um, certainly is one aspect of it. Um, you know, the, the higher the wall, but not too high, the less wind you have. Uh, I mean, you know, even with this little breeze that we've got today, right? You go inside the observatory and there's nothing. I mean, you won't feel it at all. Um, so so that's helpful. One thing I would have thought about possibly. I've seen some of those south-facing walls that fold down mm. um, to give you a little bit more. But when I looked at those and the amount of time that you're actually having that south-facing wall open for imaging, you're running into the corner of the building okay. fairly quickly, yeah. right? You know, so you, maybe you get an hour's worth of acquisition out of it, right? But it just didn't seem to make sense to add that much complexity onto that side of the of the building, right? You know, sure. Um, so. Again, I, I think that the best thing to take out of this is, is that as you expand the series now um, of different people doing observatories different ways, everybody should tune in and see what to pick out the best for them, right? Whether you build it yourself, uh, like we talked about, there wasn't anything here that couldn't be done by myself. It's a time cost of money kind of a thing and, you know, who's going to help me raise the roof, who's going to help me with rafters, so on and so forth, um, versus having somebody build it and then just roll it right onto your your pad. One of the things that you know that we like to that I like to do is you want to kind of personalize the observatory and I'm getting to the point now where the walls are partly up and I can start to do that. Um, Desiderata um, happens to be one of my most favorite poems. Um, one of the ones that always resonated to me was there's a line down here that says um, you're a child of the universe no less than the trees and the stars and you have a right to be here. And, and in fact, that line, Child of the Universe, resonates with me so much that that's the name of the observatory. Uh, in Latin, I converted Child of the Universe to Puer University, um, which translates in Latin to Child of the Universe. And so my images now, that when they come out, are all pointing to the observatory name, Puer University. Um, so again, this was kind of special as well because my wife knew that Desiderata was my favorite um, kind of thoughts in life. and. Uh, one of the things she did once we had the observatory up and running was she got me this uh, canvas of Desiderata. So uh, a nice personal ad and a nice thought from my wife as well. So this was the second video in a series I'm doing, you know, obviously touring other people's observatories. 
And my hope is that eventually I'm going to use all of this knowledge that I'm gathering from other people in designing my own observatory. And that's the long-term plan, but Jay was amazingly helpful in that. Um, as you could see, he had tons of cool tips like the template for the peers and describing using poles to visualize how high the walls should go, uh, considering the tree line. Just tons of really cool ideas I'd never heard before. I think my biggest takeaway was that I think roll-off roofs are superior to domes, at least for me. It actually cleared up a bit the night I was there, and being in the observatory completely under the wide open night sky, I just really don't think you can beat that experience. So I'm keeping an open mind, but a roll-off roof is definitely what I'm personally leaning towards. I want to put in a quick plug here at the end for my Patreon campaign. Videos like this one where I'm traveling to do an observatory tour take time and money to produce. So I'm very grateful to everyone who is able to support me on Patreon as it allows me to make videos like this one. And in addition to helping support the channel, there are some real benefits for signing up. I think we're building a great community, uh, now over 700 people over on Patreon, both through the monthly Zoom calls and on the discord which is like a message board where we do challenges and group projects and uh, people have really great discussions uh, in both places on the zoom and on discord you know everything related to astrophotography is covered so if you like my videos and you could pitch in just a few bucks a month i'd truly appreciate it the link is patreon.com slash nebula photos till next time this has been nico carver nebula photos clear skies <laughs>